In this video, we're going to look at theoretical and empirical probabilities that come from, from uh, selecting cards at random from a standard deck of cards. A standard deck of cards has 52 cards altogether. They're divided into four suits, clubs, uh, spades, hearts, and diamonds, and each suit has 52 cards in it. An ace, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, a jack, a queen, and a king. So suppose that we have this deck of cards and we picked a card at random from there. That would be like thinking of the deck and shuffling the deck and then just picking a card from that shuffled deck. We'll use R to do some of our calculations. Here I'm using R Fiddle. It's available online. You can just go to rfiddle.org and uh, and it's available here. There's an editor up here and the and the R console down below. So let's begin by identifying the sample space. The sample space is the collection of all the various cards that could be chosen. Here I've categorized those as characters. Uh, this is represents the ace of clubs, the two of clubs, and so on up to the king of clubs, and down here the ace of hearts up to the king of hearts and ace of diamonds and so on. Now for future reference we've concatenated these characters into one vector to, and stored them in an object called SS for sample space. If we run that code in R then this vector is stored in the object SS. Notice nothing showed up in the uh, in the console because we ask it just to store it there, we didn't ask to show it. So let's ask R to show us what's in SS, and of course it's going to just be those characters, so let's run that code. And there we have those 52 characters that uh, represent the 52 cards in the deck. Now suppose that we wanted to think about selecting a card from this deck at random. And, and figure out what the probability is, the theoretical probability of selecting a spade. Let's re-edit our code here to keep track of some things. And let's build an object that we will call spade, which contains all of the, the 13 cards that, uh, that are spades. Then the, theore oops, then the theoretical probability of selecting a spade from those 52 cards would be the number of spades, which is 13, divided by the number of, of cards that are available, which is 52. That can be done, that calculation can be done, it's 13 divided by 52, that's 25%. Uh, that calculation can be done in R in the following way. The length of the vector tells how many elements are in the vector, so the length of spade will be 13. The length of SS will be the 52. If we now run this code, then there we are with that 25% uh, is the result. Okay, so that's the idea of theor theoretical probabilities. I'm not going to need this in the future, so let's take it out and we're going to re-edit this script as we go. So now look at the new code that I've put here. I've created an object called n, which is I've assigned 10 to that object. So I'm going to be looking at taking a sample from this sample space of size 10 with replace being true. That means this it will pick at random one of these 13 objects from the sample space, one of the 13 cards, put that card back in, and then pick another one at random until it's done 10 of those, and it's going to store all of that in an object that we're going to call EX, and then it's going to show us what that EX is. So let's run this code a few times and just kind of get a feel for what we get here. If we run the code, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 objects. Run the code again, there's a, another 10, another 10, another 10, another 10, and so on. Okay, so each time it does that, it would pick a different 10 from there. 
So now I'd like to calculate some empirical probabilities. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to define that sample space. We're going to define the spades. We're going to set n equal to 10. We're going to grab this exe. Let me take this line out because I don't want to ne necessarily show what I get each time. And then I'm going to calculate the empirical probability. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at this exe and ask the question for each element in exe we're going to ask is it an element of spade in other words it's going to take this exe vector and build a vector called r spades and and they will be trues and falses it'll say true if the element was a spade and it's going to say false if the element's not a spade Maybe it would be helpful. Maybe it would be helpful to show the ex and the r spades as we go along. Let's look at uh, this code, and then it's going to. Uh, I'll I'll tell you what this last line does uh, later on. Let's run that just a few times. See there. There we are. We we ran the code. We look to see what uh, what ex is. Notice that ex is nine nine of clubs. Um, ace of diamonds, four of spades, and so on. And notice that that's false. False, true, because we got a four of spades. False, false, true, because we got a three of spades. False, 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 and then finally true at the at the end. If you run the code again, then you get a different set of ten elements, and it'll tell us false whenever it's not a spade and true whenever it is a spade because this is element is looking at each one of the things in EX, which was the list of the cards that we selected, and asking is it an element of, uh, of spade, which is the list of all the spades. Now in each one of those cases, notice that we calculated this sum of R spades. What, R, what sum does is look at a vector, if it's a true and false vector, if the items are true, it counts those as ones. It counts the falses as zero. So the sum of this vector R spades will count up how many spades we got in that experiment. And then it will divide by the 10. So it calculates the probability. Notice down here in those two runs that we made of, of this, one time we got 0.3 and another time we got 0 0.2. We know that the theoretical probability is 0.25, so we would expect these probabilities to be close to 0.25. Now let's look at this code. I'd like to do a lot of these experiments at once and collect the data. R read what's happening here. We're going to define our sample space like we all have all, all the times before. We'll define the spade object which is the list of all the characters that are spades I'm still setting n is equal to 10 and then I'm going to build a vector that won't have anything in it it's an experiment repeated it doesn't have anything in it then I'm going to set something called j it's going to be an object and it's going to start out at 1 and then we're going to do an operation here. While j is less than a thousand and one, we're going to do the following thing. We'll say that n is is set to ten. We're going to to look at ex just like we did before. We're going to sample from the sample space ten items. We're going to check to see which ones of those ten are spades. We're going to calculate the probability the empirical probability that we get from there by looking at how many spades there are divided by 10 and then we're going to change what ex dot repeated is it's going to be whatever it used to be together with that new probability that we've got and then it will increase j by 1 and do the same thing again it'll check to see is j bigger than a thousand or is it less than a thousand? If it's a uh, thousand and one, 
If it's less than 1,001, then it will do it again. You see what that's doing then, it runs this experiment of selecting 10 cards at random from the deck, uh, counting up the empirical probability that, that we got a spade, puts that in a list until I've got a thousand items in that list, a thousand. As soon as we get uh, equal to a thousand and one, a thousand and one items. So let's, uh, let's run that. And nothing happened down here. It's because we've got this item called EX dot repeated and there's a thousand and one items in that list they're they're uh, all the probabilities that we got uh, a thousand and one uh, probabilities from there okay now looking at that list of numbers is very hard to see what I'd like to do is build a distribution table or di distribution chart for those uh, for those probabilities. So let's do this. So after we've selected those 1,001 items, we're going to look at them and build a table of them, and then build a bar plot of that table. I've decided to color it pink, and uh, let, well, let's just run that code and see what we get. Okay. So it did a whole bunch of work there, and there's the plot. Of all that time in those 1,001 trials, we got zero uh, around 50, maybe 60 times. We got 10% uh, uh, around 200 times. We got 20% really quite a few times, around 300 or so. Uh, we got 30% around uh, 210 times, 225 times. We got 40% uh, uh, a little more than 50. It's not surprising that a, uh, that a lot of the time we were getting close to 25%. Most of them kind of grouped here in the middle. Let's do this in uh, e an even more uh, extended case. Before we do the more extended case, let's look at this uh, just in a little bit more detail. It, it's not surprising that we're getting close to 25%. It's possible that we could get zero, and it's possible that we could get 70% or maybe even 100% of them being uh, spades. But it would be surprising if we selected 10 cards at at random and and got zero or it would be surprising if we got uh, got all ten of them being spades now let's look at how we've modified the script we still have our sample space we still have our our vector of all the spades the 13 spades uh, and let's let's increase n to say a thousand and Let's do the while loop for 10,000. So what we're going to do is shuffle that deck of cards and pull a card out, see what it is, put it back in, shuffle it, and do that a thousand times, and then find the, the probability. Now, notice that n is a thousand now. So when we calculate this probability, we're going to count up how many of the thousand times that we pulled a card out they were spades, we're going to divide that by a thousand to find the probability and then we're going to gather all of those probabilities together uh, until we've got 10,000 trials. Now of course that would be difficult to do by hand but uh, we can run this and R can do that really pretty quickly. This time instead of, uh, of building a bar plot of a table I'm just going to build a histogram of uh, of that uh, vector of, of probabilities. So let's run that code. Notice that it took a few minutes to run that. Let me pull that the picture in so that you can see it. Hang on, it's taken me a minute to do this well. 
Okay, so there's the histogram. Notice that most of the scores, most of the probabilities are right around 25%. And it's unusual if we get some out here, but sometimes we did. Out of those, uh, uh, those 10,000 times that we ran this experiment, there were times that we got zero and times that we got quite a few, but it was very seldom. So the, uh, it, th those probabilities ap appeared very, very seldom, not very often. It was very unusual not to get something close to 25%. Now, it's worth understanding what's going on here because this kind of lays the foundation for how statisticians use probability. Here's the summary idea I want you to grab hold of. Sta one way that statisticians use probabilities is in hypothesis testing. Somebody comes up with a hypothesis, something they think is, is, is true. And that hypothesis suggests a theoretical probability. So because of cost and other kinds of things, we can only run one experiment. We can go and do one sample. So we go and do that one sample and calculate the empirical probability that that sample suggests. If that empirical probability is significantly different than what the probability suggested by the uh, hypothesis is, the theoretical probability suggested by the hypothesis, then there's reason for us to question whether the hypothesis is correct. There's reason to feel like we could reject that hypothesis. Otherwise, if it's not significantly different, we don't have enough evidence uh, to reject the, the hypothesis. Okay, we'll come back to that later on in the course, but there's the idea.